Welcome to July Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we're not going to do the news. I will do uh, some things and more, more lofty questions to answer. And this really all stems from a comment that I made on my Twitter account where I said, hey, my crypto account is on fire, bank account is near zero, and I'm pretty happy. Which I think a lot of different people who invest into cryptocurrency or assets, they really have this same problem that I have, which is they are crypto heavy and their bank accounts uh, sometimes go a little bit uh, lower than what they would like it to be. And uh, that's just how it is. So uh, this actually was from, uh, from uh, Dustin Bailey, or D. He says, I started this year with a low percentage in crypto and a high percentage in bank, and I've done literally nothing, and it's flipped. And when I, when I read that, I go, that's pretty much how it, you know, to really get things going is really how it should be done. And I said, hey, man, I go, you do the hardest thing. That, that, and this is what a lot of people get wrong. You're an investor. Just buy and hold. Don't do anything else. Watch your, watch your, wash, wash your gains multiply exponentially. It's very easy, but a lot of people uh, get it wrong. And I want to do this video because there's, first of all, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, you shouldn't really, you know, don't listen to me for, for what I have to say. This is just, just the things that I uh, am doing personally and where I've seen a lot of people have the greatest success, which is just to be a buy and hold uh, type of investor. Now, we're going to talk about a lot. We're going to talk a lot about different things, uh, which is, you know, as how much, you know, to hold and how much would I be holding and for how long. Well, it really just depends. And uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of different factors. But the thing that I thought about when uh, I was, you know, talking to D is that when he's talking about is, you know, how he got there. And I can just tell you right now, anybody can be a millionaire. It's, it's, it's not as hard as you think. It just takes time. There's no get-rich-quick schemes. The bigger question, and really the big lofty question is, what do you do when you do not have to go to a job? What do you do when there's really nothing to do? You don't have to do anything. So uh, we talked about this in a video we did uh, about two or three weeks ago. And I think it's going to uh, be pretty relevant for a lot of people right now because when you get a lot of money coming in, it's like, well, well what do I do now? And uh, I had the same problem when I moved to Vegas and I, I, I kind of lay it out to, uh, in this video. So uh, I will link this at the very end. But really, like, like I said, that is like the biggest lofty question is, you know, what do you do? The smaller question is, is how do we get there? And you can, this, this article summed up everything pretty easily. And it was called, uh, this is how a janitor, a librarian, or a teacher uh, can amass millions and become multimillionaires. And this is how they did it. And uh, we've all heard these types of stories, but I really want to break it down and just talk to you about how real simple it can be. So a lot of people on the internet, they make things way more complex than they need to be. It's actually very, it's very easy to, to make things complex. It's very hard to make things simple. This is exactly what uh, Steve Jobs would always talk about. And they worked very hard to make, to, to simplify things. So I don't know why people, you know, they, they make it so difficult. I, maybe it's because the more difficult you make things, the easier it is for people to like rely on you. So you're like, oh, it's super difficult. You can only listen to me. So that's just how it is. But anyhow, uh, this was a pretty good article and just breaks it down into four pieces. And, and they give a pretty nice uh, intro here, but I'm going to skip it because there's better stories. The first one is live well below your means. And I'm going to pretty much skip over this because I think we've all heard that to death, right? Nobody needs to go out there and buy a super expensive car and house because uh, what is it really going to do for you, right? I mean, it's a great status thing, but uh, the people that had amassed these millions, uh, librarians and uh, clerks and things like that, they just lived well below their means, like way, way below. Um, but we're, we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I mean, I think we all know to you know avoid the Starbucks and not do too much. But I got to tell you, Starbucks really is good. I mean, if you're like having a shitty day and uh, you're just looking around, you're like, okay, what you know, what can I do? Do like a uh, nice little pick me up? Boom, Starbucks. Yeah, it's gonna cost you, but I mean, I'm not going there every single day, so whatever. You got to take care of yourself a little bit. That's all I'm gonna say. The second one is. And this is the big one. Just invest early and invest often. What do we mean? We know to invest early. I mean, if you want to be like an early investor in like an ICO, I mean, good for those guys. Those guys may not like bandits. But this one is where these guys, and I think you, uh, could really benefit. And it talks about sacred millionaires know how to hang on to stocks for the long haul instead of selling when the market dips. And that is the beauty of crypto uh, is that 
It is like the proving ground for everyone to understand how to buy dips. Like, I really think that if you want to go into traditional markets, that you should start with crypto first. Because if you can make it in crypto, you can make it anywhere. Because, I mean, there are massive dips. Uh, there is massive volatility. And like 20 or 30%, uh, like I've always said, 20, 30 percent on the on on the traditional side is like I'm going to jump out a window. 20, 30 percent on crypto is a Tuesday. We don't it's not a big deal. So I mean, start right here, and uh, that is what it is. So uh, these guys, these you know, simple people, they just said, hey, I don't really care about dips. I'm just going to keep buying, or I will just buy when it dips. Uh, this person, Gremmel, whoever that is uh, in the story, purchased a thousand dollars worth of Walgreens stock and held on to it for 70 years 70 years so that is the big thing i mean if you can buy and hold it's going to go up massively brooklyn brooklyn locals donald othmeyer professor and his wife mildred they amassed hundreds of millions stemming from brookshire hathaway these were stocks they invested into for just 42 bucks back in the 60s and today one share is worth two hundred eighty thousand dollars. so it's not just important that you invest early and often, it's also important that you invest into the right types of things. And that's pretty much why uh, you're here in this channel, you're just trying to you know, figure it all out. And uh, uh, I don't blame you. So, uh, three, these millionaires don't just avoid time in the market, they also reinvest their dividends. And this was, the, this was the, 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 the very big thing that I wanted to get to. So, when these people invested, like uh, the one at the very beginning, they purchased $1,000 worth of Walgreens. The other ones, they uh, did Berkshire Hathaway. They were paid in dividends. And they said, okay, do you want to cash out? You just want to cash or do you want to reinvest? And they always said the same thing. Reinvest whatever I get from these stocks and put it right back in. And it was just a flywheel effect. And this is, this is all about compounding interest over time. And this is the, the, really the secret sauce and the magic. And this is why I'm always talking about Celsius. This is actually why I'm also talking about Voyager because when you put your money into those two exchanges, well, Voyager is a broker, you get paid in either Celsius or into like-minded uh, or like uh, a cryptocurrency. So that's what I'm talking about. In the link, in the, there's a link in the description of every one of my videos, exchange of wallet fees is gonna take you here. And just so you know, Voyager and Celsius are my one-two punch. But here's the thing. Instead of you cashing out because you've got, let's say you've got Bitcoin on Voyager, well, you're going to get, get paid 5.5%. Five, five you're going to pay 5.5% and it's going to go right back into Bitcoin. You're not going to get dollars. They're going to give you it back to you right back in Bitcoin, which is the exact same thing these other people did. Uh, with Celsius, it's 6.2% for sell. Or if you want it in uh, Bitcoin, it's 47 so that's it, it's, it all depends on where you're at. Like Americans right now, we can't earn in Celsius. We can just earn in Bitcoin to Bitcoin, Ethereum to Ethereum. Uh, stable coins, 8% or 14%, 13.86. It just depends. So this is why it's so important that you understand like, well, why would I put it there? Why would I get that? Oh, it's because it just keeps adding in. So like, let's say you have one Bitcoin, then you make 5.5%. Now you got 1.0005 and then you're earning interest on in that and interest on in that interest on in that and before you know it you're like wow i got two bitcoin wow i got three bitcoin it's amazing so uh i mean pretty tough right now but uh let's just take a look at like something like uh vgx or ethereum or basic attention token something like that you could definitely start to really compound it and who knows what that's going to be in like three five ten years that's why i talk about it's not inconceivable or outside the realm of possibility of people being millionaires, especially in crypto and digital assets, just for doing these very simple things, buying and holding, buying during the dips, uh, putting it in somewhere where it, can, where it can gain yield. And before you know it, you're like, wow, look at all this money that I got. Not too bad. Anyhow, uh, that was the whole thing there. So then, then the other thing was, this was two important things, uh, I think it's because it really talks about what are you going to do afterwards. And this was talks about earn more on the side. So not only did they invest, but they also did other things on top of their regular job. Some might call that a side hustle. So Donald Othmeyer netted extra income with his side gigs as an investor. Uh, Leonard Gigowski, a butcher in Milwaukee, earned enough from investing in his grocery store stock to eventually purchase the store, a nightclub, a dance studio, and residential properties. And that's huge, right? Because if you can do all those types of things, there is nothing better than having passive income. But you know what's even better than passive income? Having multiple streams of revenue for passive income. It's like the best of all time. So like for me personally, like 
Uh, we have this channel that works out okay. I've got a nursing education platform where I teach nursing students how to pass a clinical exam through an online education platform. I also do Amazon FBA. I also do investment properties, and we have a sports facility. So uh, all these different things that are out there, it's multiple streams of income, and when one is hurting, other one picks up the slack, and so on and so forth. So you're never stuck into one thing, and that's what, that's another thing that we like to talk about here is diversification. Diversification. So. Uh, I stay here with passive income like real estate. You don't have to do any work, uh, Carbonero says. Uh, aside from maintenance and expenses, you just sit back and collect a check. And that's true. Investment properties are one of the greatest things. So this leads me to my next point about we did a video which talked about the uh, ultimate uh, cash out strategy. And I, did, I talked to you about not just putting everything in cash, but into stable coins because of what we just talked about, gaining yield, also purchasing land. Homes, the Amazon FBA, staking for uh, cryptocurrencies, and my big one was crypto IRA. So I will link that at the end, and I'll explain all those different types of things. But uh, but the home and properties, that is a big thing. And the next sentence, what they say here is, they say Air Airbnb, for example, makes it easy to add a passive income stream by renting out extra space or your entire place when you're away. So uh, you'll notice here, 20% investment properties. We've got a couple homes right now where we do Airbnb. And even with the COVID coronavirus, and I don't know when you're going to watch this. Right now it is, uh, what is it? It is uh, Friday, February 5th, 2021. So there was this thing called coronavirus. If you're watching this later, it totally sucked. It kind of wiped out uh, the economy for quite some time, but it was great for Bitcoin because there was a bunch of quantitative easing <laughs> and uh, all the different money printing. It doesn't matter. But uh, so when all this was happening, um, we thought that people wouldn't be able to rent our home uh, because of Airbnb and people would be uh, not traveling as much. And it did for a bit. It slowed down. But then we found out that people still needed a place to rent because they got shuffled around for their jobs or they needed to come and, and see a family that was sick or there was an event that they had to go to or whatever it was. So they would rent out our homes. And we're doing, and right now, uh, the vaccine's just rolling out, still doing okay. I think as time goes on, uh, especially with the vaccine really getting pummeled through, uh, you're going to see a lot of people want to travel. And with travel means Airbnb, or they can do hotels, but I like uh, just staying in people's homes. It's uh, cheaper, especially if I travel with a large group. works out pretty well for me. And uh, uh, it's just one of those things that I, I think could potentially happen. It's also why I invested into Airbnb stock. I think it'll go up pretty well because they just IPO'd a couple months ago. Yeah, that, that's another thing. So this is what we talk about as far as multiple streams of revenue. I can see it. Definitely how you can become a millionaire just by investing yields diversification. And the next part and the last part here is improve your financial IQ. So uh, reading investing news, talking with like-minded friends and seeking counsel. And you're on this web, you're on this uh, YouTube video or you're at danteachescrypto.com watching this video and this is where you know you come for like-minded people uh, in the comments below you know say whatever you like uh, but all the people that are here pretty much have your pretty much the same mindset of this is where I want to be this is where I want to put my uh, my funds into because I feel like I can grow it so it's always good to be around like-minded people because you can kind of share that same dream and I think uh, you know whatever your dream is Usually it is to go up uh, or in increase in price for cryptos. <laughs> this is a great channel for that. So um, lastly, it's, it's uh, Robert Moore, a librarian in New Hampshire with a $4 million estate, befriended a financial advisor who encouraged him to invest instead of putting all his earnings into checking and savings accounts, which you know they don't give uh, any type of interest these days. Uh, I think banks are going to go uh, to the wayside just like Blockbuster did. So uh, we will see. Again, Putting it into a place where you can gain a bunch of yield is uh, one of the great things. So this was just, just a basic overview of how to do those things. But there's a flip side to that. So first of all, you look at these people. I mean, librarian, teacher, you know, they're not anything, uh, you know, where, where they would uh, accumulate a ton of money. But they were able to, you know, at the very end, to, have, to amass a small fortune. So what does that say for you know, other people who like already have a bunch of money? So there was a story I never forgot. It was called From CEO to Pizza, Pizza Delivery Guy, which is nothing wrong with delivering pizza. I, I did that in college. It was great. But uh, this was a story about Ken uh, Cartman. He was making $750,000 a year, $750,000 a year as a CEO. 
Then they stayed a perfect financial storm hit. He tried to start his own hedge fund right before the economy began its nosedive. So first of all, diversification. If you're going to put every, all your eggs in one basket, make sure it is the, the best basket you can potentially find <laughs> because uh, this here, Cartman, uh, he had a problem. You know, it is weird though because like LinkedIn was started during the 2008-2009 financial crisis and uh, they did okay. But uh, I guess hedge funds, uh, not, not so much. Anyhow, uh, pretty soon he's having trouble putting food on the table for his wife and kids even though the table sits in a gigantic mansion in Clearwater, Florida. He begged a local restaurant to give him a job delivering pizzas for $7.29 an hour plus tips, and he said yes, or they said yes, and that is how he was able to uh, survive for quite a while. And he got back on his feet, but it just goes to show you that it doesn't matter how much money you have at any one point. It is really about what you do with that money uh, moving forward. So this is one of my fears for everybody on this channel. Again, not financial advice, but I, I remember when I lived in Las Vegas, I was looking for a house to buy, and I went onto um, the south side of Vegas, and I was looking for some, some pretty decent houses, and the guy that was selling it, I asked him to go, hey, why are you selling this house? It's pretty nice. He's like, hey, you just want to move? He's like, uh, just having some problems here. Um, he goes, I made, he said he made millions uh, in, in his life uh, doing investment properties, and then he took all that money and put it into one investment uh, situation someplace outside of Vegas, or no, it was outside of Arizona, where he put like, he said he put like almost $5 million into it, and then something happened with the city, and it got shut down, and then financial ruin, and then blah, blah, blah. So to me, I always think to myself, even if everybody here on this channel, everybody, all my 100K thousand subscribers everybody becomes a millionaire i don't think everybody's going to stay a millionaire because they're going to be like ah oh, easy come and then easy go so it's one of those things where it's it's not how much you make is how much you keep and that is the big thing about you know just be careful of what you want to do and that's why i talk about uh diversification um when we had it right here on, on that video again i'll link at the very end so those are the big things and then lastly or a couple lastly i want to say uh two things and that is that when we talk about living below your means, you still have to live. So this is one of the stories that we got. Uh, the librarian in the uh, couple stories back, he amassed $4 million as a, as a simple librarian, which is fine. Uh, and, but what did he do to get there? Well, he lived alone. He drove a 1992 Plymouth, wrong with that, and never went out. Okay, uh, He would have some Fritos and a Coke for breakfast, a quick cheese sandwich the library, and he would, home have a, he would go home and have a frozen dinner because he only knew how to work the microwave. So if you want to do that type of thing, uh, you can definitely make millions, but it would be a pretty crappy life. And it's like what my friend, uh, here we go, my friend Diddy always says, when in doubt, zoom out. Diddy was the guy, he's been on the show a couple of times, he's a great guy. He was the one that sold all his stuff in the early 2017, his home, his cars, and everything else, and uh, put it all into Bitcoin. And he didn't just sit there and watch, just you know, click the refresh and just watch all the money go up. Well, I'm sure he did it for a while. But you see his videos where he's doing? He's in Portugal, he's doing a lot of cool stuff, on the beach all the time, traveling with the family, doing great things. These are the things that we should really be trying to amass. It is not about so much about amassing uh, a fortune or, or massive amounts of money. It is about just having the those freedom units or dollars or however you want to call them uh, that allow you to actually do the thing that you really want to do instead of just you know stuck in some place in some junk job that you hate and the boss that you can't stand and everything else. So that is it. That is it for for uh, today's video. And uh, hopefully that hits home and gives you a little bit something to think about. Anyhow, if uh, put uh, comments below. I will link those those two videos and uh, that is it for today. But hey, if you watch all the way to the end, uh, hey, congratulations, you made it. I uh, want you to hit the thumbs up, that would help, and then consider subscribing. A lot of things that we talk about are pretty time sensitive, news and, and different happenings that go on. So definitely consider that. And uh, that is all for right now. So uh, I'll put the two videos up and uh, that is all. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.